In this video, we're going to talk about analysis errors in RCB. So basically, an analysis error is when the RCB software is unable to successfully complete the analysis. Firstly, we're going to see how can we tell if the analysis has finished successfully. We'll see uh, basically what analysis errors are, the most common types of errors and how we fix them, and then best practice to avoid analysis errors altogether. So how to tell if the analysis has finished successfully? Um, in short, basically in the working area, after we hit solve, static analysis, linear static or second order, after some time, basically we see some results or the results tab is available. That's probably the simplest way. So either in that black Fortran window or if we go under reports log file, um, in more detail, what we need to see if we look at point number four is a time elapsed and then this dotted line at the bottom. So if we see that, then the analysis has finished, um, the analysis is finished and we have results. So the analysis is finished without errors. Now the the key steps in the analysis, basically the the air, the the points where the analysis can stop for various reasons, is points one to three. So point number one is the generation of the wall finded elements. So when we hit F5 on the keyboard when we're modeling, or when we go to solve mesh, the program generates the mesh in the slab zones. The mesh in the walls is automatically generated when we do the analysis basically at this point number one based on the mesh on the top and bottom of the wall. So uh, this is basically one of the most common areas where the analysis can fail so the automatic generation of the wall finite element mesh. The next step is the assembly of the global stiffness matrix that's another point where it can crash the analysis can stop and then finally the decomposition of the global stiffness matrix. So if we're watching the solver run and it gets through these points one, two, and three successfully, uh, we can be confident that it will finish the rest of the analysis. So there's still a bit of analysis left to go, but these are the key, uh, the key steps where analysis errors can occur. So basically what are analysis errors? We mentioned previously that RCB is not able to complete the analysis. So here we see a screenshot of the analysis Fortran window with one example. So uh, during the global stiffness matrix decomposition, so that was uh, step number three from this slide, uh, it's crashed for whatever particular reason. Now it should be noted these aren't the same as slab meshing errors. So slab meshing errors are covered in separate videos, how we fix them. But it should be noted that slab meshing errors are often the root cause of most analysis errors. So if we spend time to clean up all of the meshing errors, then we will be avoiding the majority of analysis errors. Now we have many different types of errors. Uh, this, for the remainder of this video, we'll go through a few of the more common ones in an example, but a thorough list is um, shown in the user manual, which we'll also have a look at. So looking at the user manual, uh, where the analysis errors are detailed is under RCB, analysis and solvers and errors during the analysis. So here are all of the, pretty much all of the errors that occur, um, at this, particularly the most common ones. So what causes them and the solution as well is detailed. So we'll minimize this and We'll, uh, we'll look at a few errors in practice, so we'll see what happens when they occur and how we fix them. So basically we'll just go through some of the, through some of the most common ones that occur. Uh, again, working on the common file that we've been working on in the past few videos, um, but I've deliberately put some errors in there just to uh, basically to stop the solver to create an analysis error. So we have, we need to mesh first. So we'll just hit update mesh and then we'll run the analysis. <clears throat> okay, so the meshing is complete and we see we have a few closed node errors or we have many closed node errors on the basement levels. But you know, we're pressed for time, we'll ignore them, we'll just jump straight into the analysis, see if we can get this model running. So we go solve linear static, 
and we will see what happens. So we see it's attempting to make the, uh, the, the finite element mesh for the various walls, which it got through all 797 of them. Now it's calculating the wall stiffness matrix. However, it fails at wall number 17. So if we hit enter to close this window, we see we have some error. We can even click on this. We can click on this link in the manual and that can provide us more information. If we want to see that window again, we simply go to reports, a log file, and we see it here. So it tells us wall number 17 needs to be fixed up. So to find wall 17, we hit control F on the keyboard, hit wall 17, hit OK. So then this takes us to this location. So first glance, this looks all right. But if I hit shift E to show the mesh, we see that we have many meshing errors along the walls length. So what's happening is that these meshing errors are along in, in the slab in uh, basically based on those meshing errors, the incorrect location of the slab mesh, the wall mesh isn't um, able to be created correctly. So basically it's crashing at the point where it attempts to decompose or basically analyze the wall stiffness matrix. So how we would fix this, we would get rid of the meshing error. So straight away we can see we have this geometry line node here, uh, which is basically causing the angle of this geometry line and this geometry line to be different from these two wall segments. So how we would fix this up, we would go home, change snap to grid, drag and drop, and then we would just extend and clip this line. So if we update the mesh, we should see no meshing errors in these locations. And then hopefully we won't get the analysis failing at that point. So no more meshing errors on the basement two and basement three levels. <coughs> And if we go linear static again, hopefully the analysis will not crash at that location. So but the very fact that it's spending so long on wall number 16, the stiffness matrix of wall number 16 indicates to us that that wall might be a bit too big. So we could, if we wanted to speed up the analysis, split up wall number 16, but in this case, it's all right. Okay, so the analysis has stopped again, this time at the final stage of this global stiffness matrix decomposition. So it tells us um, zero or negative diagonal member. Uh, so that's one particular error that can occur. Uh, it isn't giving us a location of the error, most likely because we have multi-core two solver sets. So it tells us to use multi-core solver one for the location of the error. So if we hit enter to continue, so Again, it gives us an, um, a link to the manual. If we click, it will open the manual for us. But we'll just go straight in and try to fix this error. So again, reports, log file. We have no idea where the location of the error is. So how we figure that out is we have to change the solver version. So we go to settings, settings, system settings, and change it to multi-core one, for example. So hitting OK we have to run the analysis again and then the analysis will crash again but this time it will give us coordinates where the error is occurring. We can then investigate further and try to fix it. Okay, so the analysis crashed again. However, now we have some X, Y, Z coordinates. Hitting enter. So we have some more information in the manual if we were interested. But 
we'll just find this location and try to fix it up. So let's go to reports log file and what we're interested in is the XY coordinates so I'll just hit control C copy that to the clipboard but also this Z coordinates so the floor height so this 17.55. So basically we just have to go up to the relevant floor where we have a Z of 17.55. We don't look at that minus 8.55 so that's height above below ground. We're not interested in that, we're interested in the absolute height. So 17.55 is this floor and hit control F. We search for XY coordinate and simply paste in the coordinates from the report. So if we hit enter we see straight away okay we've got a beam element sitting outside of the slab zone. So switching on color by thickness uh, basically these yellow beam elements are basically lines they're a line of stiffness that gets applied to the slab zone. One of the uh, key requirements for them is that their entire length sits inside of the slab. So to uh, basically to get rid of this error we just have to pull back the edge of this beam into the slab zone. So if we have snapped a corner on we simply drag and drop that back. We have to run the mesh again and then we'll run the analysis and hopefully this model will now run. Okay, so has the analysis completed successfully? Is the results tab active? Yes, it is. Therefore, the analysis finished without any errors. We can double check it by going to reports log file. We see the dotted line and time elapsed. So all good. In summary, we learned what analysis errors were and basically how to avoid them, how to fix them. So the best practice to avoid analysis errors is to basically round off geometry and clean all meshing errors. So the majority of analysis errors are caused by messy models. In particular, we should pay close attention to having no meshing errors along our walls. So the walls are the critical elements. We generate mesh not only along the slab, in, uh, at the wall's length, but also along the wall itself. So if we have many meshing errors along the wall's length, then when we generate the wall find an element mesh, chances are there will be an error. So we should pay particular, att particular attention to the walls. It's best practice to keep the wall length below 15 meters. So if it's very long, uh, the analysis may not be able to create the stiffness matrix for that wall. Uh, and if they're below less than or equal to 15 meters max, then the model runs a little bit quicker. Uh, basically we want to make sure that the for beam elements their entire length is inside of the slab zone. Uh, things we didn't see in this video but uh, basically double height columns and walls so basically spanning between floors where there is no connection to a slab zone they should have a fixed fixed connection at this interface so where there's no slab they, ha they have to have fixed fixed continuity. And if we start hitting uh, analysis errors, we should change the solver version to multi-core 1 or single core. So it runs a little bit slower than the multi-core 2 solver, but it will tell us where analysis errors occur. Once we've gotten rid of all of our analysis errors, we can switch it back to the multi-core 2 solver under settings, system settings.